started innocently enough with a simple question of could an AI change your mind? On Reddit, someone dared to find out using bots. The twist though, these weren't your run-of-the-mill bots spamming link trees or awkwardly suggesting cryptocurrencies. They were covert ops, designed and dispatched by a group of researchers from the University of Zurich. These bots infiltrated a subreddit famously devoted to changing people's opinions, r slash change my view, which we'll be shorthanding to CMV today. Unbeknownst to the thousands of earnest debaters who spent time crafting responses, their opponents weren't always human. Instead, they were algorithmic infiltrators using AI-generated arguments designed to resonate deeply, personally, and convincingly. It's worth mentioning that Reddit has long been a playground for digital puppeteers, which includes both sincere experimenters and mischievous artists. None of these earlier escapades were as ethically spicy or quite as controversial as the Swiss-German stealth experiment, so let's rewind a little bit and start at the beginning. Before the team responsible for this current disaster ever wrote a line of code, Reddit had already served as a sandbox for lighthearted AI antics. In 2012, the community-run subreddit simulator let Markov chain bots emulate popular subreddits for laughs. Markov chain, by the way, just refers to a fancy statistical model. That is literally all you need to know for this video. By 2012, hobbyists had swapped out the Markov code for GPT-2 in r slash sub simulator GPT-2, where language models composed eerily on-brand parodies that everybody knew were fake. These projects were transparent opt-in carnivals, and they set the baseline that makes Zurich's covert operation look downright radioactive. The university team began with the sort of earnest goal that looks wholesome in a proposal passing by the review board. Investigate whether machine-generated dialogue can reduce political polarization. When translated, that just means let's unleash a squad of eloquent chatbots on unsuspecting Redditors and see who blinks first. To pull it off, they borrowed a playbook that's evolved steadily since the goofy Markov bots of 2012. After a decade, the tech is a bit more sophisticated, has had some grammar lessons, and learned about emotional nuance as well as how to cite peer-reviewed studies that it flat out invented. The group armed itself with a state-of-the-art LLM. They never confirmed which, but if you hear whispers of GPT-4, you're probably not hallucinating. Each bot needed a believable backstory, so the team wrote character cards. Age, profession, tragic childhood, pet anecdote, you know, the usual stuff. One persona claimed to be a trauma counselor, another a software engineer who cooks sous vide on the weekends. I found this pretty amusing because character cards as a concept have been around for a while now, but seeing an adversarial experiment and the roleplay community shake hands on you have to sprinkle in slice of life details to make the best cards? I don't know, it kind of tickles me pink, even though I know it shouldn't. Back to the topic at hand though, before replying, the system scraped up hundreds of users' prior comments to infer politics, hobbies, history, and more. A secondary model then crunched that dossier and spat out a psychological list of hooks tailored to resonate with the target's identity. Academic jargon calls this personalized persuasion. The rest of us call it the kind of mindfuck we're all trying to avoid with AI systems. Armed with these character cards and opponent profiles, the primary LLM composed an argument tuned for maximum delta earning potential. At the CMV subreddit, a delta is an acknowledgement of someone's viewpoint being changed, so beyond karma, there's another metric here the researchers can watch. All outputs were quickly screened by human overseers for any blatant rule violations. Ethical alarms, though, those things were put on snooze. To everyone's surprise, but no one's really, the bots performed their tasks really well. They earned deltas at roughly triple the human rate, racked up karma, and collected compliments like wow, you're so articulate. It was the first time in CMV history that a non-existent trauma counselor convincingly changed dozens of real minds about pit bulls, economics, and who knows what else, all while quietly logging the data. The spell was broken on a late April weekend when the researchers finally emailed CMV's moderator team with a debrief that boiled down to, hey, thanks for lending us your brains. Surprise! Moderators opened the PDF, read about the AI sock puppets posing as grape survivors, dog attack victims, and responded with the calm, measured professionalism of a goddamn fire alarm. Within hours, Sticky Post appeared, uh, its title basically reading, Unauthorized Experiment Conducted Here, and we are not amused. 
Reddit's legal team materialized in the comments like a corporate John Wick. Chief Legal Officer Ben Lee called the study deeply wrong, promised formal legal demands, and shut down bot accounts as quick as possible. Other online researchers, though, were having PTSD flashbacks to Facebook's 2014 Emotional Cognition Study, where 689,003 users unknowingly became guinea pigs. That scandal triggered new International Research Board guardrails, to which the university team gave the rough response of, trust me, we reviewed everything manually. While many watchers and unwilling participants compared the covert operations to prior studies, like the Stanford Prison Experiment of 1971 or Milgram's 1963 obedience trials, what's often overlooked is that those historical controversies ultimately drove the creation of formal consent safeguards. In 1979, the Belmont Report codified the core principles behind experimentation involving humans, paving the way for today's International Review Board system. These guardrails exist precisely to prevent non-consensual manipulation, yet the Zurich team ignored them completely. By bypassing informed consent, they violated not only the subreddit rules, but also the very ethical framework born from decades of how not to experiments. It really calls into question how this thing got greenlit in the first place. Facing a torrent of think pieces with headlines like, Have researchers learned nothing? The university launched an internal investigation. Within a week, the team issued an apology, vowed to never publish the data, and offered to help CMV detect future bots, a gift roughly equivalent to the burglar installing your new alarm system. Behind the scenes, international review boards everywhere felt the tremor. Drafted protocols that once sailed through with the label of minimal risk now triggered responses that simply read, define minimal. The phrase online field experiment suddenly smelled like gasoline, leading reviewers reaching for the red pen marked explain how you're not the CMV guys. And the Reddit community, well, they started looking sideways at any comment that was a little too polished. More than usual, at least. See, karma farming with GPT had already annoyed a number of individuals, but this had crossed a line. Subreddits updated their rules to require AI disclosure labels, though enforcement is a bit of a gamble in its current state. At the end of the day, where does this Reddit experiment leave us, besides slightly more paranoid about strangers online sharing heartwarming stories? Well, for starters, it forces three different worlds, AI research, social platform governance, and everyday digital citizenship to draw former boundaries before the next bright grad student decides deception is both edgy and publishable. Reddit currently operates like thousands of tiny fiefdoms, where one subreddit welcomes dad joke bots, another might treat AI outputs like radioactive waste. Redditors won't wait for legislation, so be sure to watch for plugins that flag suspiciously smooth prose, karma heuristics that penalize high-velocity posting, and new cultural tells. Done with communities instead of to them, AI can still be a force for good. Think language tools that help shy users articulate thoughts, real-time civility filters that prevent flame wars, or bots that convert jargon-heavy research into plain English. This fiasco simply clarifies the price for skipping consent. One torched reputation, a mountain of angry op-eds, and an involuntary crash course in legal correspondence. In the end, German and Swiss researchers accidentally authored a cautionary fable for the AI age. It's not that machines are uniquely evil, it's that humans, when gifted with an impressive new hammer, keep forgetting to check whether the thing they're swinging at is a nail or something else entirely. My big frustration with this whole event is the lost data. It may have been uncomfortable to see, but I'm not sure if holding on to that information was the right approach, because now there's damage without insight, and that sucks for everybody involved here. That being said, I'd love to know your thoughts about it in the comments below. And well, folks, I think that's going to be it from me. Join me next time where I figure out a way to retire this ending shtick with something more snazzy. See ya, nerds.